Welcome everyone to this video here. This is going to be the first of several videos that's going to get into uh, just a, a lot of the information that I had uh, crammed into my head for the DEF CON workshop that I gave with Ryan and Aaron, um, and then just didn't have a chance to get it all out. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time here and, and try to capture it in video, hopefully so that the, the rest of you could get some benefit from that. I want to focus on really getting into the reversing of uh, the, you know, the, the how Lockbit does its API resolution and then some of the anti-analysis techniques that it has. Um, before we get there, though, there'll be a video or two here just to provide some basic triage analysis, uh, just to kind of set the stage here. Uh, this certainly doesn't cover what was covered in the workshop and what Ryan and Aaron covered. Uh, this is just a deeper look at the area that I was responsible for that, that again, I didn't quite have time uh, to get into it. Part of my prep is to, I guess, over prepare. Um, and so it's very easy for me to get a lot of different, you know, different knowledge and, and analysis ready to go just in the, in the chance that I may or may not need it. I like to, I like to do that because it helps me to actually be very flexible. Then when I get into a workshop environment, you can get the files then, uh, from the workshop here, I'll post this link for the GitHub in the video description. We just need this DC32 workshop files. I should have these downloaded already. Let's go see if uh, it's there. Yep, so there it is. Okay, so the password for the zip, let's see if I can just get this up on the screen here by showing the password. So DC32 workshop, there you go. You can see that there just in case I forget to add it to the video description or something. Um, and that should give you the LB leak folder. I'm gonna copy this to the desktop and then we'll navigate in here. Now, um, what you're gonna find is this is the entire builder. The builder was leaked by Lockbit, um, or for, I don't actually don't know the story on how it was leaked, but it's, it's a, a leaked builder for Lockbit so that essentially it could provide this builder to affiliates. They could build their own ransomware, um, generating the ransomware with their own private public key, and then of course use that for distribution. Um, now, the builder itself is, is actually quite straightforward. Uh, the build.bat file is going to be our, our primary entry point here. And again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on the builder because I want to get us into the reversing of some of the aspects here. Uh, but you'll see um, actually that there is, uh, this is a, a modified file. And so with uh, the workshop itself, uh, Ryan modified this and used a slightly different version. So I'm going to change the extension here to, I'm just going to call it the old, it'll become the old one now. And this dot back, well, that was the original. So I'm going to remove that extension. And that's the one that we want to look at. Uh, if you're curious, you can see the difference between the two. Uh, but the idea here is uh, that essentially we have the ability to, or we can look at all of the, the different ways in which the builder then is just being invoked by, de by default. And there, it's going to generate um, essentially three different, well, several different binaries, uh, some DLLs, but two bi binaries that we are primary in, primarily interested in for this analysis. And that is this lb3.exe and then lb3 underscore pass.exe. Um, these are standalone executables. One requires a password or a passphrase. Essentially, this is the packed version. Um, and the other here is unpacked. So we'll take a look at those in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Uh, in order to run the builder, we just need to open up a command prompt and navigate to that folder there. It'll be leak and run build.bat. That's gonna run the commands. And as you can see with the original script here, it exits at the end. Uh, but all we need to look at is in the build directory. Now we have are two executables that I mentioned. And uh, there's also some uh, additional text files here. Uh, of relevance is password underscore exe.txt. So this is gonna be the password for that executable. And you'll see that there is a, um, a safe mode. I haven't actually experimented with that much. Um, I'm assuming that it is going to not actually do the ransomware, but I'm not entirely sure. So I guess if that's something you have a, a good environment for, feel free to play around with. The main thing that we need from this, uh, this text file is the actual password. So when we experiment or explore this obfuscated version, in order for us to get past it, we actually need the password. So th this is really the first level of anti-analysis that we run into because without this password, let's say that you, you came across the binary in your environment and you didn't have you know, the, the context of its execution, 
Well, you could very easily get stuck then uh, not being able to get past uh, this packing stage without this password. And so you have to think about the context in which this is delivered. Something is going to then be responsible for, you know, dropping and downloading this, executing it, and passing along the password at the same time. So uh, first level, first layer of anti-analysis right there. Okay, that's that sets the stage. Next video, we'll take a look at both of these executables here, do some basic triage before we get into, I'm gonna use IDA for this series. Now, this also is a good time to point out that we need to be very careful with dealing with ransomware and you need to make sure that you're in a safe environment, that you have your analysis VM set up, not connected to the internet, isolated from your network, um, all of the measures that you should take in order to perform safe and effective malware analysis. And if you're not sure on that, my suggestion is to just watch, don't try to follow along. Um, if you feel comfortable and confident, then again, just take sure you take appropriate measures. Um, I have snapshots, a good snapshot ready to go. It's very easy to make a mistake, especially when we start doing some debugging and lose control of the sample. It ends up executing, ransoming the system, and you're gonna need to restore or revert back to a, a known good or clean state. Um, I'm also gonna use the cloud-based decompiler, and I'll, I'll caution again here when we move into that part of this analysis, which means that my VM is going to need to be connected to the internet at least to a certain degree. You know, so uh, that's something that if you were to use maybe Ghidra, Ghidra is going to offer you the offline decompiler where IDA with the free version, everything I'm using is all free and open source. Uh, that's going to actually need to be able to connect out to the internet. So it adds a little bit of el you know element of, of additional risk there if you don't have your environment properly set up. So uh, that's enough with the warnings. I'll see you all in the next video and we'll do some basic triage analysis.